Hi guys, today we are looking at what uniform you should be getting for your garden design or landscaping business and how exactly to get the best value and the best quality. So first of all, what items of clothing should you get? Now I would always recommend t-shirts or polo shirts whether you're a landscaping or a garden design business and I would recommend a formal shirt for those that are going out to quote or if you're a garden designer. Then for the colder wintry months you want a zip up hoodie or a pullover jumper as well as a breathable mac because it is going to be wet, it is going to be rainy and having those branded things means that your shirts aren't to waste because you do have that branding over the top as well. Now one thing when looking at clothing is to think about the colours of the clothing. If you go for a white t-shirt it's obviously going to get very mucky if it's for your installation team and certain colours will show up the dirt quicker and also kind of sweat patches and everything else. So have a think carefully about also what is going to suit most people. So darker colours traditionally work quite well like navies, um, blacks or dark greys. Those are really good colours to choose from but obviously look at your branding guide. Is there a colour in your branding that could work really well as a background for your tops and t-shirts? And it doesn't have to be, say you had navy as one of your colours, you don't have to have um, navy t-shirts, navy formal shirts. If there is another colour in your branding for example, say a more um, tealy um, colour, then you could have a teal formal shirt um, in, as well as the t-shirts being navy. So make sure that you kind of have a look, have a think, what will be best, what will make you stand out, but also what is going to be practical. Now let's move on to what logos and information you should include on the items of clothing. So first up is the most common and it is the logo, your business logo, on the left or the right breast. This is something that I would definitely recommend for all shirts and jumpers as a minimum. The others that I'm gonna go through are optional and I think in conjunction, maybe not all together, but in conjunction and variations work really well. So the first optional one is your logo on the back of the t-shirt. If you have landscaping and install teams or maintenance teams, having this on the back of the t-shirts so that when they're digging in the ground, it is still very clear on the back of the t-shirt. The company that they work for is really, really good. You may also want to include your website on the back of the t-shirt and maybe the phone number of your office. That is completely up to you. The website tends to work quite well and the phone number has worked well in the past. It is completely up to you, as I say, the variations of which you want to include. If your phone number is a mobile number, I probably wouldn't include this. I would just use the website address underneath. And last but not least are your accreditations. So I would recommend putting them on the sleeve or again on the back of the shirt or on the front of the shirt on the other side on the chest that is not taken up with the business logo. These are really good for showing your reputability and reinforcing the brand image that you craft through your website and every other marketing platform you use. So what is the best way to source a custom uniform? The first thing you need to do is to look at the quantities you need for each of the clothing types. The bigger the quantities, the cheaper per item of clothing it will be to get them supplied and embroidered. But you don't want to order too much for the teams that you have, so be careful, have a think. What quantities do you need for now for your existing team? But I would recommend getting a buffer, so some extras for when those need replacing, but also if you get additional team members. Now, if you are accredited, it may be worth looking to that accreditation and asking if they have shirts embroidered with the accreditation logo. You will find many accreditations offer these shirts to you at a price, so they already have the accreditation logo and all you need to put on is your business logo. Now it's the number crunch time and comparing costs. So when looking at an embroidery company, I would go and recommend looking for three companies in your local area, asking them for the supply of the clothing and the price that they would do per garment, per item of clothing and comparing the three. I would also look at sourcing the clothing items on your own and then contacting a company just to embroider them. Most companies will be more than happy to do that. I know I've done this for companies before where we have sourced clothing from various different retailers outside because it's worked out cheaper to buy the clothing separately and then get them embroidered after by a company. Now with any embroidery company, there will be a charge to add your logo to the system. So if you do have a company already, I would recommend sticking with them because there will be a setup fee no matter where you go unless of course they are wildly expensive so maybe if you haven't ordered in a while compare them against other competitors um, and if they are rubbish service obviously look elsewhere. 
And now you've decided on a company that you're going to proceed with to embroider your clothes, you then have to supply your logo. Now this will need to be a high res logo, most commonly without a background, so it is just the text and the image. Um, but they will specify their requirements, so make sure that you um, have a look and see if you have high res logos to their requirements. So that wraps up this video about uniform for your garden design or landscaping business. If you have any questions or would like some recommended supplies that we use, please don't hesitate to reach out info at thelandscapercircle.co.uk. See you guys next time.